Today we're cooking vegetable surprise. Here's how. Like Drake, we start from the bottom with a foundation layer of mashed potatoes. Pour it in like concrete. Look at that ooze. Top that with zucchini strips. Zucchini strips. Zucchini strips. Zucchini strips. Throw over some frozen veggies. We're talking carrots, peas, corn. Next up is tofu. We're doing it straight up with no flavoring because we're fucking hardcore. There's nothing more vegetarian than vegetarian pizza. So we're packing it right in the middle. It's fat, so make sure you punch it. My fucking surprise, it's lentils in a vegetarian dish. These bad boys are gonna give us some right farts later on. More zucchini strips. Finally, we top it off with some huge ass marshmallows. Why marshmallows? Because vegetarians gotta have dessert too. Now it's all set to put in the cooker. We begin with a free prototype for the upcoming clouds below. You get to glide above the sky and check out the beautiful panoramic views below. If that sounds good, check it out. Early Access Project Secrets of Grindia is an action RPG with co-op for up to three. The art is pleasantly uncomplicated and the story is already playable and teeming with amusing video game references. What's available so far is very polished, but there is still considerable content to be added to both the story and arcade modes. Watch as Mehmet cuts Caves of Quad is a hearkening back to the original days of the roguelike. Basically, it's complicated and text heavy. But while you might groan at such a proposition, it opens up the door for so many possibilities and deeper fantasy and storytelling. It's still being perfected in early access. A strictly grey and white colour scheme and perfect lines are just not a minimalist style, but also typify and in fact constitute the neat puzzles of Hook. The mechanics, mostly composed of switches and paths, are simple to follow and the puzzles satisfying to complete over the 50 levels. All up, there's maybe an hour worth of playtime, more than fair for the one US dollar price tag. Dreams. You may not be familiar with Howard Phillips, but if you play Dream, that will definitely change. This is because the game takes place inside of Howard's subconscious mind. What this equates to is a rather surreal first-person exploration experience. It just graduated from early access, but rather prematurely as it is still quite bugged. Choose the path I take. Adapting a text into a movie or a play is fairly straightforward in comparison to adapting it into a game. It definitely takes some out of the box thinking, but thankfully Michael Collock's adaption of Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea does. The Old Man Club is a simple series of arm wrestles that require a fast and constant clicking of the mouse. This may result in a bit of sweat, rage and broken mouses, but if you get through it you may just prove your supreme masculinity. <laughs> The cult hit Five Nights at Freddy's returns with its fourth installment just a year after the original debuted. That's quite insane. Four games from the same series in pretty much one calendar year is just unheard of. And then when you consider it's all done by just the one person, Scott Cawthorn, it's just almost impossible to believe. This time, Freddy and co leave the restaurant and invade your house, proving that no matter where you are, you aren't safe. What you can expect is jump scares. Lots and lots of jump scares. That's pretty much the entire game and series. You play it to shit yourself. But we're probably selling it a bit short. Freddy's has a deep lore that reads like a creepy pasta, and this new edition drops the security camera formula for a fresher feel. The series is an astonishing achievement. As a game, it delivers a truly scary and great spectator experience. 
and around it, a strong community has grown and supported and spurred on the creative vision of an individual to unthinkable heights. Bravo. My name is Ishmael Gilder. I am the writer, director, and leading actor of The Magic Circle, the state-of-the-art 4D graphical reimagining of the hit text adventure that launched my career. For 20 years since then... The Magic Circle is a rather out there and complicated game, so bear with us as we explain it. Primarily, The Magic Circle is a comedy that satirizes game development and also the gaming industry. You're a playtester effectively trapped in this unfinished game, bugged by a hellish development. You'll see in some parts that the world is a medieval fantasy and others spaceship sci-fi. This is evident of the three Arguum developers represented as giant eyes in the sky trying to finish the game as you play. The dialogue is what makes up the humour, and although there are some perceptive comments about game development, the comedy of it all is a little hit and miss. Perhaps surprisingly, the glue that holds the game is the hacking puzzle mechanics. Much like last year's Hack and Slash by Double Fine, you solve problems by reprogramming the game. Except the execution in the magic circle is smoother. It sounds like a cult and is truly a different gaming experience. So if you eat your chicken with a spoon, try out the magic circle. Of all the elephants, Tembo surely has the baddest ass of them all. And now he's got a game to expose it to the world. At first, things weren't so smooth with some launch issues, but everything has now been resolved. And thank God for that, because this is an upper echelon 2D platformer in a crowded and old genre. You need the delicate precision that the best of platformers demand to make it through the levels. But one of the joys of Tembo is being a big hulking elephant. Because of your great force, your rolls and hammer trunk attacks can cause a satisfying degree of damage. For a comparison, the game plays out a bit like the original Sonics, and even a bit like Retro's reboot of the Donkey Kong Country series. And if you ask us, that's pretty badass. The top spot this July is Rocket League. You've probably already heard of it, which is just a testament to how good it is. And next week in our Game of the Month video, we'll be breaking it down and finding just what exactly revs Rocket League's engine so well. Thank you for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indieformer. <laughs>